Up until this point, we'd been measuring the calibration OSL piece load port. We've now replaced that with an actual physical line, and we're still using the ripple spec, the markers in three locations, and we can see from the measurement the average value is now a minus 2.2 dB, maximum of 1.82, and a minimum of 2.54. We can use the auto scale to apply finer resolution and see that the actual cable loss is quite good between those two numbers. Going back to full scale, we now will do something uh, slightly different. To this point, we've been using the return loss mode with a trace of cable loss to make our measurement. At this time, we're going to change to a cable loss mode and add a trace that is cable loss on port 1. As before, our limits have transferred to this new cable loss mode because they are designed for a cable loss trace and as shown previously the ripple spec is the best limit line to use for this. We will edit the limit line at this time though to cover the full measurement range of the IVA. When making an error it will throw an error message and you can see that I need to type in correctly what the answer is. In this particular case again the ripple was not very large I can actually reduce it down and I'll use something along the order of 2 dB. Returning to the measurement of cable loss and allowing data to be taken over the full range, we find that when the measurement is complete that from 600 to 2750 megahertz we have a ripple of an average loss of 1.484 dB. This is quite good and to be expected. Certainly knowing that the loss into with a short is good, we now want to look at adding a second trace. And this particular trace will use the distance default which is used to determine connector length. The cable that I've selected has a length of approximately 13 meters, so I'm going to select 20 meters as my length. I'm going to use a default velocity factor in cable loss of 0.82 and 0 dB per meter as a quick measurement. If we wish, we could select a custom type and possibly find in the table something more appropriate for our measurements. But in this case, for the training example, we'll choose custom. Returning to the plot by pressing the center, we now sweep the data. And as before, initially it will measure trace one, and then it'll follow up with a measurement of the data to do the calculation for the distance to fault for trace two. As we can see, we have a great deal of information. We have at the end of the line an open circuit. We can take and place a marker at this time again creating a marker by long holding the marker icon brings up the possibility of adding a max trace or a max marker and we find now that our cable length is indeed 12.96 meters and with the short circuit this shows return loss very nearly what twice the cable uh, loss should be so this again is a good indication. Additionally, in this measurement, we see multiple peaks. Again, adding more markers. We can add markers that are a value, maybe a marker three that is of a type local maximum, which will help us find these peaks. And then we'll go back to our screen and we'll rotate between or select between the markers using 
the marker mover. Moving to the value marker, we scroll from the lowest frequency or lowest location to the first peak and you can see it's easy to select it. But moving to the third marker as we scroll, it's going to select a localized peak. So as we come to connections in the line, this is made up of a series of different lines, it's going to find the peak so we don't have to really focus on how, how easily or how hard it is to pick that peak out. In this particular case, we see two peaks, again at locations of 3 meters and 8 meters. This is the connections between the cables that were used to make up the 13 meter cable.